The Justice Department will not prosecute itself. I know it's so shocking. Uh, the Justice Department was referred for a criminal uh, investigation to look into Attorney General Merrick Garland for refusing to hand over tapes of President Biden's interview over classified documents. Joining me to discuss this is one of my favorite YouTubers who always breaks down legal issues in an understandable and fun way. Uh, Viva Fry joins Redacted for the first time free. Fry, I'm sorry, I <laughs> say it wrong, and our viewers <laughs> correct me every time. I don't know why it, it, that throws me. It, well, I was told many times to change the name of the channel, but I'm stubborn. It's Fry, like half of my last name is Fry Height, so yes. you know, freedom. Right, okay, so we're essentially talking about freedom. What we're talking about today, though, is obvious question, do we have a two-party justice system? Because we see that the Attorney General is protecting the Biden administration. Is there any other way to see it? It, well, it, it, people make the the not the stereotypical sort of trope that it's it's hierarchy. It's not justice, but hierarchy. I, I don't think it's hierarchy. It's just lawlessness at this point in time. It, it's like when they uh, found Merrick Garland in contempt, and I'm like, well, who would who would prosecute him? Oh, the Department of Justice would have to decide whether or not to prosecute itself. And you, you go back historically, we have the examples where there have been bona fide uh, contempt of Congress. It, when the government was breaking the law, I mean, Eric Holder is the classic example. They refer to it in the memo, declining to prosecute themselves. Th there have been bona fide cases of contempt of Congress, contempt of subpoenas. When the government was breaking the law, nothing, crickets. And now you have two cases within the last three years where it's just outright lawlessness, where they jail Peter Navarro for uh, defying a congressional subpoena that was arguably unlawful on its face, and I say arguably, but not arguably, and Steve Bannon now, who's trying yes. to stay out of jail pending the appeal. So it's, it's not a two-tier system, it's not hierarchy, it's just outright lawlessness, where you know, as much as the color of someone's sweater, to use uh, the, the Judge Engeron's example, is the distinction that allows the government to say, we're not prosecuting ourselves, but we're locking up our political adversaries. And so is this precedent setting is now any subpoena it, it lacks teeth because it's not being enforced? It, well, they've never really been enforced. I mean, the contempt of Congress was a political uh, feather in the hat and everyone knew nothing was going to happen. It's just the, the, the way things are going now. What was always just a political stunt, a political maneuver, find Eric Holder in contempt of Congress. Forget the other examples. All right, good. You score some political points, but nobody's going to jail. And that was the precedent for the history of America until the Biden administration said, no, we're, we're going to put you in jail now. And not for not for a little like a day or two or a week or something nominal months. Navarro mm -hmm. uh, is in jail for months. They're trying to put Bannon in jail for months, four months leading up to the 2024 election. They've gone crazy in, in that what was otherwise just political maneuvering, political stunts has now turned into depriving people of their freedoms and for the most uh, egregiously law, uh, lawless or unlawful reasons. Navarro and Bannon, they're not equivalent to Eric Holder by way of the best example. The, the, the January 6th committee that issued those subpoenas, I, I'm not going to say it purportedly, was unlawfully formed in the first place. It didn't meet the quorum of the House resolution that authorized it. It wasn't bipartisan by any means. The two bipartisan Republicans, those so-called Republicans, Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger, were handpicked by Nancy Pelosi. So that, that committee was unlawfully formed in the first place. They can't issue lawful subpoenas. That's a question of law that needs to be adjudicated before you lock someone up and then say, oh, you're right, we're overturning your appeal after you get out of jail. So Was that not part of legal. Steve Bannon's defense? About the... It's part of Steve Bannon's defense as well. Bannon and Navarro. The, the committee was unlawfully formed. I had executive privilege and I was relying on professional advice. These were defenses they weren't allowed to raise. And so these are three questions that need to be addressed, answered by the Supreme Court. You know, was the subpoena lawful in the first place? Can they jail you for contempt of a subpoena if the subpoena was not lawfully issued by a lawfully formed committee? Seems like a decent question in law that should be answered before deprivation of liberty. Uh, was executive privilege properly waived? This is the issue in Bannon and Navarro, where they're arguing eh, executive privilege wasn't properly lawfully waived as if there's some protocol that needs to be um, you know, gone through in order for the waiver or sorry, the assertion of executive privilege to be um, carried out. And, so, and, there's, and then there's reliance on professional advice. Their lawyers told them, I don't know if it was this is not a lawful subpoena or you have executive privilege, you need not testify, in which case or 
comply with the subpoena, in which case you're lacking one of the two elements of a criminal infraction. You got the actus reus and the mens rea, the intent to commit the crime or the act that constitutes the crime. So reliance on professional advice has always been a defense. All these two gentlemen were stripped of these defenses and found guilty of contempt of a congressional subpoena when nobody else has been in the history of America that I know of. I think there might have been, but you, you know what I'm getting at. Right. So the very act, though, of hiding the tapes of the Biden of, of Joe Biden's interview with the Justice Department is interesting. I read Andrew Weissman's book, Where Law Ends, about the Mueller investigation. And one thing that really bothers him is that James Comey maligned Hillary Clinton in the run up to the 2016 uh election and he felt like that didn't give her a proper trial she just was maligned without having her day in court and that influenced the outcome of the election so now we see something even more blatant is trying to hide information from american voters do you see it that way is there any other way to see it for us not being able to hear or read the transcripts well, there's only two possibilities with that. I'll get to that in a second. But nobody maligned Hillary Clinton. She maligned herself through her actions and her deeds and her words. So yes, you know, yes, this she, is a, a I, liberal I, 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 excuse. <laughs> and, and you know, I read all kinds of things that I don't necessarily agree with, no, just I, to say, like, what are they going with this? Where you know, but, it's a wild. No, thing. I said that. That wasn't a critique at all. I was just saying, like, it's, yeah. it's an interesting thing where the, the the victimizers always pretend to be the victim in Hillary Clinton. They maligned me after I admitted to bleach bits, smashing stuff. Oh, no, they maligned me. Yes. No, your, your actions maligned yourself, Hillary. Um, with the Joe Biden transcript and audio, it's wild. It can only be one of two things. Either the um, audio does not match the transcript, which I think we have sufficient evidence to conclude would be a matter of fact, in which case they're trying to hide uh, damaging evidence leading up to an election. I mean, can you imagine how bad that audio could potentially be? So it's either one of two things. Either the audio doesn't match the transcript. It's going to be evidence of a cover-up to make that befuddled old man look more sane and, and less senile than he actually is. Or it matches, and it's just a red herring to get people spinning their gears, get people up in arms, and then release the audio, and it doesn't reveal anything. And you say, look at all these idiots. They just spent two months screaming and, and, and complaining about corruption, and the audio matches the transcript. So it can only be one of two things. Neither of which are good because basically you're, you're, you're playing politics and you're playing law. I happen to firmly believe that it's going to reveal that holy crab apples was that five and a half, five hour meeting over two days as incoherent and rambling as the videos that we're seeing of Joe Biden coming out of the G7 summit and uh, his visit to France. So I, they're concealing evidence because they've given up the transcript or at least they've disclosed the transcript. So they can't then say, you have no legislative basis to request the audio when we've given you the transcript of the audio. It just doesn't make sense. So they are, in my view, clearly hiding something. But it wouldn't surprise me either if they're just making people spin their wheels and waste time and waste energy uh, to get this, tra this, this audio recording, which they might get sooner than later. But we'll get it later at some point. OK, but uh, House Speaker Mike Johnson says that he will seek a court order. Could that actually enforce this with the Justice Department still at the helm? Well, this is where I would have to pick the brains of smarter people. I'm just a lowly former Quebec attorney. I, I don't look I, from what I've seen. What are yeah. they going to do? Executive privilege. And, and it's been asserted. Tough noogies. That's it. You, you can't have one branch of government uh, basically controlling the other. I, I can understand that argument. Bottom line, it's just dirty politics. And it's clear that they're hiding something. I, I just think the, the there might be the argument that they can't assert uh, the absence of a legislative purpose for the subpoena for the audio because they've already provided the transcript. So how can you give half of something without giving the other half when it's part and parcel of the same thing? So they might have waived it, which might be an interesting legal argument. But above and beyond exerting uh, uh, executive privilege, I don't know. I don't know how they get around it. So then do you feel on this and many other things that you talk about, Hunter Biden, um, the, the Trump uh, documents case, all of these things that we are literally hitting the boundaries of the universe? Like we can't, we didn't expect to get this far. And now we're testing our system with almost everything becoming political. And like you said, lawless. It's, I've, uh, I've been here in this sphere for long enough when I was totally wet behind the ears and had no appreciation of the, the depths of the corruption and lived through 2016 at 2020. And now I've been in America for close to two years. Uh, I keep saying they've, they've crossed Rubicon after Rubicon Never in a million years, eight years ago, would I think it would have gotten to this point. It used to be like, 
you know, defamatory politics. It used to be slander, dragging your name through the mud. It never used to be trying to lock up your political opponents for the rest of their lives, lock up their family, put their attorneys in jail. I mean, it, 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 it's gone from uh, dirty politics to deprivation of liberty, uh, desecration of solicitor client privilege, weaponization of the prosecutorial system, the justice system. It's, I, don't, I don't know how much further it can go. It will swing back. The only question is, you know, the pendulum swings back or it just falls over and shatters. Uh, we'll see which one comes first. But no, I have never could have imagined it would have gotten this far and this extreme. Yeah, same. Same. Well, I want to keep you around for a redacted conversation. So that is something our viewers can watch in the upcoming days, because I want to know why you would choose to come to America. If you don't mind, you don't have to get that personal. But that's something that our viewers can watch in the coming days. So for this segment, I want to say thank you for your expertise. And uh, I hope this is the first of many times that uh, we can meet on camera and maybe in person as well. Thank you very much for having me.